what's up guys welcome to this week's tutorial in this video i'm going to show you how to add a count up timer into your wix website in my previous video i showed you how to add a live digital clock into your wix website now in this tutorial i'm going to show you how to add a count up timer and in my next video i'm going to show you how to add a countdown timer to stay connected with my videos click on the subscribe button and also turn on your bell notification to get notified the moment i release such amazing videos now i'm going to show you how this digital count up timer actually work now first of all you can see we have a number of buttons and this button here says stop so you can go ahead to click on that and that stops the timer you can go ahead again to click on the timer as you can and on the button as you can see the level has changed and you can see that that started and so on you can also go ahead to reset the timer to start over from the beginning and we can continue doing that all right so this is just so amazing we can also use these buttons right here but it's advisable to actually make use of either of these two buttons or you use just one single button in order not to have errors in your website i'm going to show you how to add this count up timer into your website so right here in my editor what we're going to do first of all is to know the elements that i have used now this is just a simple box element which you can find when you click on the add and then over at the box section you can drag and drop any box that you like now what i did at the customization is actually to go to the customized design the fill color and opacity and then i chose a color in this case i chose a black color as you can see and then i reduced the opacity to 50 percent now that gave it a little bit of the transparency you can see at the background then right over here is just a simple text element which you can get from when you click on the add and then on the text you can drag and drop any text that you like and then you can customize and change the font or the size of your timer all right and these are just normal wix buttons that you can actually add into your page so you can add that right over here at the add and then to the button and then you can add a number of other buttons that you want so all you have to do is just to go ahead and customize you can use the icons and you can use the text all right so let's dive into the code which is the most important part of this tutorial before we do that make sure you turn on your dev mode from right over here so you're going to make sure yours is turned on and then you're going to find uh this code panel right here so you're going to get over to this icon and then maximize your code now you can see that we have a huge line of code right here but don't worry it is very simple and i'm going to show you how to make use of this code now you're going to notice the library here which is the wix window but don't worry about this library we're not going to make use of this win mix window in our code this is only for the copy to clipboard api i have used for the code section now if you notice on this page there is a code section that allows you to copy the code to this tutorial so this is just what that code does so we won't be making use of the wix window library all right so where we're going to start from is right from here which we're going to start with the onready function and then we're going to start with the on click event now you can see from these buttons that these buttons actually call functions inside of them now these functions are what makes the count up timer to be very interactive the first one which is the start button and when we go into our page you're going to see that we have a button right here and this button is called the start button so we can expand our properties panel and right here you can see that the id is called the start button so when we click on that button we want to start the timer and then next one we have the pause button now we have another one which is right over here this button is called pause button so when we click on that again we're going to find on our properties panel that the id is called the pause button so what we're going to do here is that when we click on that button we want to pause our timer and then we, the same thing goes with the reset timer which is right over here when we click on this button, as you can see from here, we have reset timer. When we click on that, we want to reset. We want to call the function, which is called reset timer. I'm going to show you later on the details of these functions that we have added. Now for the final one, which is the start stop button. So if you head back into the editor, you can see that this ID, the ID of this button is called start stop. Now we can see from here also that the, the ID is start stop. We can use this button to start the timer and also to stop the timer. So that is a very pretty interactive process. As you can see from right here, when you click on that, it starts and then changes the level of the, of the button. When we click on that again, it's going to also stop and then changes the level. So that is actually the best button I would use for my timer. Now let's head to the other part, which is the main part of the timer and what makes it functional. Okay, so now to the main part of the timer. Is 
is right over here so what this function actually does is to check if the timer is running or not so if the timer is running we're going to start the timer and then we are also going to change the label of our button to stop all right and this is another function that we're going to get to very soon and if the timer is not running then we're going to pause the timer and then we're going to change the label of our button to start and right over here we can see that we have another function called start and what this does is that it's going to use our variable x so the variable x is actually assigned to the set interval function that allows us to run the timer function in every for every 10 milliseconds all right so we have another one which is called a pause timer now this function is going to pause our timer and what it's going to do is that it's going to clear the interval or stop or halt the set interval function all right and then we have another part of the timer now these are variables that we're going to be making use of inside of the remaining part of the functions this is the main part of the function or the timer function which is actually very useful now right here what we're going to do here first of all is to check the time the timer zeros now when you have your timer it's supposed to count from one two three and so on but then there won't be a zero in front of it such as what we have here for example we have a zero right here and then we have a one now without this function which is a check timer zeros which is right over here we're only going to have a one and not a zero same thing goes for here we're only going to have a six and then not a zero all right so what we're going to do here is that first of all we're going to check for that function for all the milliseconds for the seconds for the minutes and then for the hour and then the next part of here is that we are actually going to iterate our function the first timer parameter that we have is the milliseconds so the first thing that first loads when we start our timer is the milliseconds so we're going to start with that as you can see that's what starts all right so what we're going to do here is that when the time this millisecond timer reaches 100 then we're going to reset our millisecond back to zero and then we're going to continue doing that again over and over and then next thing we're going to do is to set our seconds to actually start iterating and then we have another conditional statement that says when our seconds reaches 60 we want to stop our seconds and we're going to also start iterating our minute all right and then we're going to start iterating our minute and when our minute gets to 60 we want to reset our minute to zero and then we're going to start iterating our hour so you can can see that once this gets to 100 it's going to increase this by one and then once this gets this is our second so once this gets to 60 seconds we're going to bring this back to zero and then we're going to increase this by one now this is the minute so 60 minutes makes one hour so once this gets to 60 we're going to bring this back to zero and then we're going to increase this by one and so on all right so the loop just continues on and on and on and then the final part of this section is that we actually want to display our time inside our text all right so right over here you can see that we have the id which is called a timer the id of my text which is right over here is called timer now you're going to change your id to whatever you want but this is where you're going to replace your id all right the text and then we're going to use template literal to actually display our our timer variables so from here we have the hour we have the minutes and we have the seconds and we have the milliseconds when you click on that you're going to see that we are actually making use of this section because we want to add first of all add a zero in front of them and then we're going to be displaying whatever value is inside of this so this check timer zero function checks if our values are less than 10 and then it's going to add a zero in front of it and then the whatever value it is so for example we have right over here I'm going to pause this for a second as you can see we have zero one all right so if we don't have that function this zero is going to be removed and then we're only going to have a one all right so that is what the function actually does so this function is not really so important if you don't want that you can just remove this um this function and then right over here you, you just have to delete this and instead of using milliseconds right over here for the seconds for the minutes and then the hour you can just go ahead to use these functions uh these values instead all right you can just add these values into your template literal all right and then finally we have the reset timer this function allows us to reset our timer first of all what that does is that it's going to bring our timer back to zero in the code now you see right over here it's going to reset that inside the code first of all 
and then next we want to display to the user that this actually happened so what we're going to do is to actually display using the same id of our text which is called a timer as you can see right over here and then we're going to reset or add the values right over here so you can go ahead to just say uh, anything click on the button to continue all right so that is just all it does but i like mine to be set to zero 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 at least the user has an idea of what this code does all right so this is just everything that the functions do so again i want to remind you that you only need to use one of the buttons you can use just this one to start or stop your count up timer or you can either use these buttons to start or stop the timer in the future you might actually experience trouble when you add all the buttons together but you just need to use either these or these two together so that is it about this tutorial i hope you did enjoy it don't forget to subscribe to my channel and turn on your bell notification because i'll be releasing how to add a countdown timer into your wix website so in the future you're going to receive notifications don't forget to turn on your bell notifications as well and check in the description for the code to this tutorial and also to other tutorials that i have you can visit my website at wixgenius.com all right thank you very much for viewing i hope you did enjoy this video see you in the next tutorial bye bye